Hello and welcome to another Daily Devotion Online as uh, we try to stay connected while we're apart from one another during these pandemic times. And uh, this week's theme is unity. Man, we could use some of that, right? Um, so I think about, nothing says unity like, you know, Christians taking each other to court, people coming to somebody's home church, at, in their house rather, you know, and somebody's baked the communion bread, but you know, Ed and Joe have eaten all the whole loaf while other people are yet arriving. Some guys drank all the communion wine in the corner. People are arguing, well, you know, Cephas is preaching on Sunday, so I'm going to church. No, I like Apollos. I'm not going. These things all happened, mind you, 2,000 years ago. I mean, I'm not talking about anything that's happened in any of my churches. Well, at least not people fighting over and eating the loaf of bread before everybody gets there, but pretty much everything else. Well, how do we know all these things? Well, because of Chloe's people, huh? Well, Chloe and her crew have uh, written to the Apostle Paul and told him that all these good Corinthian Christians are really just ankle-biting each other, nipping at each other, and pointing fingers, blaming each other, and just being outright just kind of rotten apples to each other. You wonder, kind of, is, is Chloe uh, a good-intentioned person of faith, or is she a tattletale? Is she a snitch? Or is she one of just a, just a busybody, you know, kind of like that neighbor who's always, like, looking in the window at the kids in the neighborhood and, you know, on the phone all the time, the authorities. Yeah, those kids are in the park again. Well, it's a park for children. Ah, you know, they're making too much noise. Whatever it is, you know, Chloe's people have uh, gotten Paul's dander up, and he, he just says, listen, what's the matter with you guys? You know, I wasn't crucified for you. I mean, you guys argue about all this minute detail stuff. You yell at each other. You treat each other terrible. You know, I had uh, a guy who used to come to my first church, and he said, you know, a, a church is a hospital for sick Christians. And uh, I see that your church is, is pretty full of uh, sick Christians. <laughs> I said, whoa, okay, all right. What, should, what do you really think? How did you really like to play, Mrs. Lincoln? Um, but the reality of what he said was true. I mean, when Christians fight with each other, people of faith fight each other, treat each other like garbage, say ugly things, post ugly things, just are fueled by fear and hatred, it fragments not only the, the relationship we have with each other, you know, when we fight these territorial games and we put up our denominational signs and build our fences high, saying, well, this over here is how Christ is, is worshipped rightly. But, you know, you Lutherans down the road or you Presbyterians, it reminds me of the old joke, you know, a Presbyterian dies, he goes up to heaven, he talks to Peter. Peter's giving him a turn and he walks by and there's a field and there's people at a picnic and they're having like a company party and people are you know, they got hats and cakes and stuff. Now, these are the Methodists, they're having a good time. They come over here, oh, here, these are the Catholics, they're having a good time. Then there's like this huge wall with big brass gates and bar on the outside. He said, hey, these are the Baptists. They think they're the only ones in here, so shh, be quiet. You know, this kind of territorial garbage and nonsense, this petty nipping at each other. And Paul says, enough already. Cut it out. I mean, if grace is a real thing, then start showing some to each other. It's not just for you. Not just for people in your church. Quit acting like you're God's little appointed posse of deputies meant to go make sure that everybody else is corralled and, and ready to hang them high if they don't... Uh, they don't do just your bidding and just how you see fit and how you read scripture. Man, isn't that just exhausting? Being that mandating things so strictly that the standard is in your eyes and nobody else can meet it. I think Jesus warns us about that a lot in scripture. In saying, find your common ground. See beyond politics, see beyond and see the person and meet each other with some faith, with some hope. Try to see Jesus in the person across from you, whether you agree with him or not. Man, we could use a little bit of that unity in the body of Christ today, because right now we are scattered all over the place, like a kid tearing through a jigsaw puzzle and throwing it all over the room. And what's the cost of that? 
a world that says, yeah, Jesus, we dig Jesus. We, we like the things Jesus says and when we read the Bible, but Jesus' followers? Uh, now I know what I tigers eat their young kind of thing. So maybe if we behaved a little more like Jesus to each other, we might have a stronger message of the unity of God's love to the world. Just maybe. All right, let's get out there and get after it, will we?